morning, friends. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is December 27th. It's the last Sunday of our year. Um, we're going to start gathering up and getting comfortable. <laughs> hey, everybody outside. Um, I'm so glad you're here. We're grateful for your presence. We feel you. We know you're there. Um, thank you for being here. I'm glad to see you guys. Thank you so much for praying for us. Um, this morning, for our call to worship, I will be reading a few words from Psalm 147, um, and after that, we'll have some announcements. So let's turn our hearts toward being together and being in the presence of the Lord. From Psalm 147, praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down his crystals of ice like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. He declares his word to Jacob his statutes and rules to Israel. Praise the Lord. Um, we are going to have announcements in just a second. Um, your deacon of the week today is Wayne Stocks, and he will be outside. This is something we've been trying to do on a regular basis. Um, have the in-person people to gather here and then have an element of someone speaking to the folks outside because we still have plenty of people who um, bring their cars in and tune into the radio station. So, hey everybody outside again, thank you for being here. And Wayne Stocks is going to bring you your announcements this morning. Good morning, Tyler. Also, uh, on January the 27th at 7 p.m., we'll have a regular church conference. And then on uh, January the 5th, uh, Pastor Reverend Eddie Thompson, who uh, did our interviews, will be with us to, uh, to further consult and to help the deacons determine how to move forward. And we'll seek his assistance as we prepare a report for the congregation coming shortly after that. Thank you. Um, let's stand and sing together. We're going to be singing a verse of King of Kings and um, one more carol for the end of the year and then one hymn, All Have the Power of Jesus' Name. So stand with me and sing.
At this time, we have um, Wayne Sox again bring us the scripture of the day, which is from the Old Testament book of Micah, and also Wayne will offer um, our prayer today. I'm sorry. Uh, the scripture reading from the day comes from Micah 6, 1 through 5. It says, Hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case aboard before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and your endearing foundations of the earth. For the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember what Balak, Kim, Moab de devised and what Balaam, the son of Or, answered him. And what happened from Shittim to Gilgal that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we come to you today with grateful hearts, thanking you for the season of the year when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and grateful to be here this morning after a year of trials and tribulations, and we're looking forward to 2021 and the blessings that you have planned for us individually and as a body at Highland Baptist Church. Lord, help us to be cheerful and willing givers and to be, remember that we can never outgive God. We ask these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. Did I just turn this off? Okay, good. Sorry. Good morning. Y'all are tough on preachers. On, on ministers. Anyway, my understanding is that I am the fourth at least, maybe the fifth, in recent memories, right? Byron and Jared and Shelley all hurt themselves in the last five years. And then me. But I'm happy to be alive. I had an accident, for those of you who didn't know, I had an accident uh, on the 14th and walked on my ankle thinking it was sprained for a week and finally went and got it checked as uh, about every one of you said, you better go get it checked. And it, sure enough, it's broken. So thanks for your prayers and watching out for me and taking care of me and, or at least trying. <laughs> it's been one of those years, hasn't it? A challenging year. Um, some of you have had COVID. Some had it pretty badly. Um, some may still be struggling. Kenny, can you smell and taste yet? Not quite. Maybe a little. Tiny, tiny, just barely starting to come back, and that's been quite a few months now. So, But thankfully, your health is overall pretty good. We just rejoice. It's been a crazy year. Started out in January with church problems. Well, culminated with church problems in January. Coronavirus hit just six weeks later, six or seven weeks later. Then we had the wonderful election season. Maybe you are excited about, maybe you're disappointed with the results of the election. Either way, it's a tough year. Illness of yourself or a loved one goes in there, a death of a loved one. Several people lost loved ones this year. Um, loss of a job or income for many people. A lot of things happened. What else? Can anybody else think of anything else that I'm big, that I'm skipping? Okay. By the way, I left my phone there. I need my phone. I'm going to use that later in the service. Um, well, if we think our problem was difficult, 
Let's look back at our passage this morning from Micah and be reminded, thank you, and be reminded of what the people of Israel went through. If you'll look with me at Micah chapter 6, uh, that'll serve two good purposes. Number one, it'll make sure I'm preaching the Word of God, right? If I'm not preaching the Word of God, you need to get rid of me. Number one. And number two, uh, it'll be easier to follow along. So as you know, most of the prophets uh, from Isaiah to the end of Malachi are pretty much uh, repetitious in a lot of ways. If, if you would just, the prophet's just saying on God's behalf, if you would just obey my word, I will bless you. That goes all the way back to Moses, the end of Deuteronomy, when he's finishing out his ministry. God very clearly, in a, in a few chapters there, 28 to the end, chapter 28 to the end of Deuteronomy, he says, if you'll listen to me and obey my word, I will bless you. But if you don't, then you get my judgment, my wrath. And that's exactly what the prophets keep saying. Go back to the word of God. Go back to the instructions of God. Go back and listen. But they didn't. So the two nations divided. Israel was one. They divided into two nations. Israel, the northern kingdom. Judah, the southern kingdom. And things kept getting worse from there. But if we go back a little farther, we remember that Joseph went to e Egypt. His family came there during a famine. We haven't experienced a famine yet. They stayed in e Egypt for at least 400 years. They ended up in slavery before God finally led them out through, the, through Moses. And then they, because they disobeyed God, they had to wander for 40 years in the wilderness. We haven't wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, praise God. Finally, they get to cross the Jordan, but Moses doesn't even get to go across because he disobeyed God at one point. But even after they've crossed the Jordan to enter into the promised land, God does not give the promised land to them just on a silver platter. They have to conquer the peoples there. And believe it or not, it's the same people that were there 40 years ago <laughs> when they did want to go in the, in the promised land at that time. But they did conquer, more or less, most of the nations, and they enjoyed the promised land. Now, if we think about our difficulties of 2020, now, granted, they're all compacted into one crazy year, but I dare say it's nothing like the history that Israel has been through, even up to this point. And yet God here, even when he has an indictment against the people, as it says in verse 2, for the Lord has an indictment against his people. What have I done, O my people? Verse 3. Have I wearied you? I brought you out of Egypt. I did all these things for you. And do you remember in verse 5, which is my focus today, do you remember what I did to Balak and to Balaam from Shittim to Gil Gilgal? Basically from north to south. I took care of you. I took you out of Egypt. I led you through the wilderness for 40 years. Your clothes didn't even wear out. Your sandals didn't wear out. I took care of you for all this time, and yet you have forgotten me, your God. But God says, Oh, my people, remember what I have done. In the last part of that, verse 5, remember that you may know the righteous acts of God. Plus, we've been through a tough year. We've been through a tough year. But God could say to Israel and to us today, remember what I have done in your midst. Remember my righteous acts. And that's what we want to focus on today. God specifically reminds His people of specific things from Moses and the Exodus out of Egypt uh, up till the time they started across the, uh, the Jordan River. God's hand of mercy and grace was upon them and helped them enter the promised land. So what about us? How has God led us through a difficult year? How has God led you specifically through a difficult year? Maybe to help you, I, I'd, I'd like you to take out your bulletin if you have one and a pen if you have one. If not, just do this mentally. But I'd like you to write down a couple of things that were difficult for you this year. 
maybe it was not being able to see folks. Maybe it was not being able to travel to visit like you normally do on the holidays. Maybe it was the loss of someone in your family through death. Maybe it was illness. Just, just write a couple of those difficult things down for a reminder. Just write a couple of those down. Or mentally image. you have a few outside? Are you doing this? Outside? One person. Come on. Okay. Well, in a minute, we're going to focus on the positive thing. Because in the midst of difficulty, the good thing should stand out even brighter. Isn't it in darkness that we see the lights better? Like the light we had on, was it this past Monday? If you got to see it. I didn't get to see it. I went out too late. Jupiter and Saturn aligned. Have you got a few things written down or have you thought of a few specific things in your mind? Let's now turn our thoughts around. What blessing has God provided? What good things have happened to you this year? Has anybody had a great year outside? A great year? I heard one. How about a good year? I'm not talking about a tire. How about a so-so year? That more people? So-so year has been, been quite difficult for many, many indeed. But seriously today, I would like us to look back over the last year. And I'm going to take this time to do something very unusual for sermons. I have asked Beverly to come up, and she's going to be our scribe today, and I want you to verbalize the blessings of God, the good things that God has done for you this year. And if you are outside, if you look in the bulletin, you will see my phone number, and I have my phone right in front of my face. You can do this from inside as well. Just type a word, text me a word or a phrase, and we will write them, Beverly will write them up here, both from inside and outside. You can text from inside too if you want. Or you can just verbalize it. Any blessing. Any blessing. Keeping well. Health. Health. Yes. A job, yes. Others? Health? Found your keys today. One person from outside says, I have come closer to God. Good friends. Okay. I have another closer, but I'm not sure if that's closer to God or closer to others. Closer to family, maybe, too. So maybe we can put that. The relationships we do have have been strengthened, haven't they? In many ways, we've had to lean on people. One person wrote in, well, I've retired this year. Yay, congratulations. Expectant children, yes. And for us, a new grandson. Okay, here's another one. Family, life, a baby, Peyton. So, let's see, anything else come in here? Extended family brought me closer to God. We're hearing that a good bit. Time to slow down. Hasn't it? Anyway, let's see. Health, again. Thank you, everybody, for sending these in from outside. I really appreciate these. Anybody else, inside or outside? God's peace in his presence. Thank you, Lydia. Okay, I just got a new one. Where is that? Prosperity, someone said. Health, another health. Oh, Ken Clements, survival. Absolutely. We know, thank you, Ken, we know how challenging those days and weeks were for you. 
Someone just said, adult children living in the area. That is great. We sure miss that. Another baby on the way. So lots of good things. You can keep sending them in here and we may, may bring them up again. Thank you, Beverly. Folks, listen, it doesn't take long for us to count our blessings and to remember the good acts of God. I rejoice in being here. I feel it's a great blessing to us. And many of y'all have expressed that you appreciate our being here. And so we are grateful that we are here. We are able to be a part of this. You see, the challenge is not so much the coronavirus, the political season that we just went through that continues to divide every season. Two years is bad enough. The presidential elections, whoever wins, it doesn't matter. It divides us further and further apart rather than bringing us together as a nation. And, and we lean on all these external things, and the Bible is very clear not to lean on those things. Psalm 20, verse 7, for example, says, Some depend on chariots and others on horses, but I will trust in the Lord my God. And again, throughout the Psalms, there are other references. Don't put your hope in people or parties or health or wealth, or power of any kind, not in the stuff that people make or generate or do, but in the Lord your God. He alone provides the hope that we need. He alone will fulfill His Word, as we will talk about more next week. And His goodness is worth remembering. So here's what we're going to do today. Something very different. Well, we've already started something very different. I don't know. Back in Joshua chapter 3, after Moses died and, and the people were ready to cross the, the Jordan River in Joshua chapter 3, if you want to read that later or even follow along briefly, I'm just going to summarize it this morning. Joshua prepares the people, consecrate yourself for three days, be ready to go tomorrow, we're going to walk across this river. Now, I don't think God has told him the whole deal yet. He just told him, we're going to walk across. And that the, the, the priests need to put their feet in the water. Now, folks, this is harvest time, and the, the, the river is at flood stage already. It's about, beyond its banks, above its normal banks. So you've got these people and they're sitting there looking at this river that is crazy wide and very deep, I'm sure, at flood stage. And yet God says, as soon as the priest touched the water, you watch what happens. And so as soon as the priests who are carrying the Ark of the Covenant step into the water, the water backs up at a town called Adam, which is easy for me to remember because it's our son's name. And it backs up at a city called Adam and the... And the the riverbed is dry. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've ever been on the shore of a river and it's just, or a lake and it's just subsided, what's the ground like? It's like mud, mushy. It's just a mess. But God did something special again because He did it at the Red Sea, if you remember it, 40 some years ago. He not only backed up the water, but He made it dry enough for the people to walk across on, which is pretty amazing. And God said, get one person from each of the 12 tribes <clears throat> and pick up a rock out of the middle of the river and build a memorial on the other side of the river so that in verse chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, when you're of Joshua, when your children ask in time to come, what do those stones mean to you? And you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off, so these stones shall be to the peop people of Israel a memorial forever. A memorial forever. You see, they could go back to that place on the side of the Jordan River just in case they ever forgot. And they could see that stack of stones and be reminded of God's goodness to them and how they crossed the river on dry land at flood stage. So what we're going to do today 
in this particularly difficult year is we're going to build a memorial for a couple of weeks at least. And we may stack these up outside as well after it's all over with, just as a reminder. I've asked 12 people, I think, <laughs> to bring a rock. And uh, Barbara, you're closest, Miss King, if you'd bring it up and just put it up here right on the stage between me and the keyboard. If you would come, those of you who have a rock, just come, bring it, and set it up, and try to try to sort of stack them a little bit, if you will. Folks, think of, think of the good blessings of the Lord, things that He has done for you and through you and through the family. So while it's maybe not quite as uh, tall or large as those rocks may have been coming out, may this be a reminder to you, a memorial to you as we close out 2020, a very difficult year in so many ways, particularly because of the coronavirus and all the people impacted by it and all of the difficulties emotionally and mentally as well as physically that have come during these last nine months, particularly nine and a half months. And may we remember God's goodness to us. I encourage you, as a matter of fact, maybe you want to put a rock or a few rocks in a small pile somewhere that you'll see on some regular basis. Outside your door, front door, back door, it doesn't matter. And build yourself a memorial to remember the goodness of God in one of the worst years that any of us have experienced. Because God is still God. He is still on the throne. He is still sovereign. He still loves us. He still is willing to forgive us. And He wants us to remember His goodness to Him and to walk in obedience and faithfulness to Him. There are a few more rocks at the end by, in the doorway. If you, want to, if you didn't get one and you want to put one up here, you can add them to this today before you leave today. Thank you so much for the 12 of you who participated. You didn't have a clue what I was going to do this morning, but I appreciate it. Thank you, Beverly, for helping as well. Let us pray as we close and think about the goodness of God. Father, thank you. Oh, it's easy to focus on the gloom, despair, and agony on me. This has been a very difficult year for so many of us, but so much good has happened. I love these comments about slowing down and bringing us closer to family and bringing us closer to You for the health, for the deliverance from the uh, threshold of death for some. Thank You for watching over all of our congregation, taking care of us even as we take the risk to gather. Thank you for those who have faithfully worshipped with us outside, even on a day when it's quite chilly or rainy as we've experienced before. 
thank you for allowing us to be here and to call Highland home. We pray, Lord, that as we close out this year, we can remember your goodness, your abundance to us. The family that we have, the friends that we have, the jobs that we have, or the retirement that we can now experience. Thank you, God, for all these wonderful blessings. Help us to look on the goodness and the blessings, O oh God, and not get lost in the stuff that is temporary. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing a song to close. God is so good. I believe, is that right? Can I read that? Yes. And if you really want to do so, you're welcome to go back and pick up a rock in the back. There's eight or ten more, I guess, probably, that you could bring and add to this. If not, you can do it later. Let us stand and sing this together. church council following service, but if you would like to leave, this would be the time after my prayer that you can leave. The church council should be relatively brief, so please stay if you can. Let us close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your goodness to us. May we be reminded of that and be good to those around us in your name. Amen. Please be seated if you're going to stay.